We're going to go through an example SAML v2 SSO configuration of Open Pages 8203 with Active Directory Federation Services, also known as ADFS. In this example, Open Pages and WebSphere Liberty Profile, also known as WLP or WebSphere Liberty, act as the service provider, and ADFS acts as the identity provider. Your setup may differ from the one shown here, but the same general concepts should still apply. After we finish setting up and testing SAML v2 SSO with open pages, I'll provide some troubleshooting information. Now, before we begin, our environment must be set up with the following prerequisites. The ADFS server must be set up and running already. This means that we have Active Directory domain services and Active Directory Federation services configured and running. Also, the open pages server must be running and working. If this is a new setup, it's typically a good idea to test the Open Pages deployment with the traditional login first to make sure the Open Pages server is working. The final prerequisite is that we need to have matching user accounts set up in ADFS and Open Pages so that the SSO login can complete successfully. In this case, we'll be using the opnet.com domain and fetching everything before the at symbol. So the domain user alaudit at opnet.com becomes alaudit. The alaudit at opnet.com user must exist in the domain, and alaudit must exist in the Open Pages user registry. In order to enable SSO in Open Pages, we need to log on to the Open Pages application as a user with administrative privileges and change some system configuration settings. Using the task UI, we'll click on the gear icon in the top right, then system configuration and then settings. In the settings, we need to show hidden settings by going to application, common, configuration, and then we can change the show hidden settings value to true. Now that we have hidden settings visible, we need to enable the open pages SSO settings. Still in the settings, we need to go to platform, security, single sign-on, implementations, current, and change the value to HTTP user-based. In platform security single sign-on, there are two more settings we need to enable. Both the SOX and the OP settings need to be set to true. These three settings let the Open Pages application know to treat users as SSO users instead of Open Pages registry users. This is especially important for usability purposes. With those settings enabled, we finish the required changes within the Open Pages application. This configuration will be the same no matter which IDP we use or identity provider. Now that we've finished with the Open Pages configuration, we need to configure WebSer Liberty for SAML v2 SSO. The first step is to install the SAML Web 2.0 feature into Liberty. We do this by opening a terminal session, as I've done here, on the Open Pages server where Liberty is running. We're using Linux to run Open Pages. If you're using Windows instead, the process should be similar, but you'll need to look up the equivalent commands. We need to navigate to the Open Pages directory and find the WebSphere Liberty bin directory. In my case, it's the OP home directory, slash WLP, slash bin. Once we have the bin directory, we need to run the liberty install utility command to install the SAML Web 2.0 feature. This feature is included with the Open Pages install media to allow for installs that don't have access to the internet. Once the SAML Web 2.0 feature is installed, we need to configure liberty to use SAML. We'll go to the server directory within the WLP user directory. In this example, the path is home, OP user, OP, Open Pages, wlp-user, servers, the name of our server, which in this case is opapp opnode one server one This directory contains configuration files for our Open Pages Liberty server. We'll use the config drop-ins slash overrides directory to override the default configuration and enable SAML SSO. Within the overrides directory, we need to create a new XML file. The file name can be anything reasonable, but for this example, we'll stick with opssosamlconfig.xml. We need to add quite a bit of XML config to this file. Please follow along with the video or refer to the Open Pages documentation to copy and paste this text.
You may notice that the config file has some entries that need to be corrected to match our deployment. First, we need to give our SAML configuration an ID. This can be any reasonable string of text. We'll keep it simple in this example and name it default SP. It's important to use the values shown here and in the documentation to start, as they are known to work. Note that the map to user registry settings default value is no, but we also explicitly set it to no, as previous versions of the OpenPages documentation had it set to a different value. We found that the no setting results in fewer undesired error cases. We also need to configure the IDP metadata setting. We don't have this metadata file yet, but we can set it to the correct directory for later. Another important setting that may differ depending on your setup is the name ID format. We set this to unspecified for this example, but this value comes from the core SAML specification. It's also common to use the email setting here. The Webster Liberty documentation on SAML contains a list of allowable values for the name ID format setting. If you're setting up your own OpenPages server with SAML SSO, make sure you get the correct name ID format value for your identity provider. The last important piece of this XML configuration is the auth filter. The setup in this example excludes the OpenPages REST API from using SAML SSO authentication. We define a pattern to match with the URL pattern attribute and then specify the SAML will only be used if the URL requested does not contain that pattern. It is possible to configure multiple auth filter elements for a SAML config as well as multiple conditions within the same auth filter element. Take care when configuring multiple conditions or filters to make sure that they do not clash with each other. More information on auth filters can be found in the WebSphere Liberty documentation. Okay, with that, we'll save our changes and then we can move on to importing the token signing certificate from ADFS into the Liberty Key Store. We need to go back to our ADFS deployment and bring up the ADFS management tool. Within the management tool, we'll use the directory structure on the left to expand services and then select certificates. In this example, we have three certificates listed. Your setup may differ. We're going to export the token signing certificate that will be used for SAML. We'll open the certificate by double clicking on it. And then we can go to the details tab and click copy to file to export it. Once we've exported the certificate, we need to copy it over to our Open Pages Liberty server so that we can import it into the key store. Now that we've got the ADFS token signing certificate, I've copied it to the resources security directory within our Liberty server directory for open pages. For this example, that directory is the same as before with the WLP user directory servers, this name of our server, resources security, as you can see here. We'll go ahead and import the certificate into our key store. We are using the default key store key.p12 here. If you've configured your own key store, you should use that one instead. Run the following key tool command to import the ADFS certificate into the key store. This command can also be found in the Open Pages documentation. Executing this command will prompt you for the key store password, which is the same as the Open Pages administrator password set on install. Key store password can also be changed after the install. Now that the ADFS token signing certificate is in our key store, we need to set up the relying party trust in ADFS. This will be what Webster Liberty points at for SAML authentication, and it will contain information about our Open Pages server. The first step to setting up the trust is to export the metadata from Webster Liberty by going to the following URL seen here. Note that default SP here must match the SAML ID we set earlier in the XML config. This will prompt a file download, as you can see on the screen, of an spmetadata.xml file, where SP means the service provider, WebSphere Liberty. Our IDP, or identity provider, of ADFS will use this metadata to establish trust during the SAML authentication process. Back on our ADFS server, we need to go to the ADFS server manager and click Tools, ADFS Management, Add Relying Party Trust, as you can see on the right side of the screen. For this example, we're going to mostly use default values, except for the claim rules and where to import the metadata from. 
as I'll show in a second. Click Start on the first screen to make this Claims Aware. Select the second radio button to import the relying party data from a file. This is where we'll use the SP metadata file we just obtained. Once we've selected the metadata file and clicked Next, we need to give this relying party trust a display name. We'll name this example after the OpenPages server to help us distinguish it from other trusts we might have. For access control, we'll also use the default in this example and just click Next. On the Ready to Add Trust page, we can see some information on the various tabs about the trust we're configuring, but we don't need to make any changes, so we can click Next again. Once we close this dialog, we'll be prompted to configure the claim rules. For this example, we'll configure two custom claim rules to convert the UPN or user principal name from ADFS into a username. Your setup may differ here, and it's not unusual to use something like the UPN or an email if you're using another identity provider instead. In the Edit Claim Issuance Policy dialog, click on Add Rule. We want to send claims using a custom rule in this example, so we'll select that option from the drop down and click Next. We'll give the claim rule the name get UPN, as that's what we're going to do with this claim rule. And then we'll set up the rule with the example rule from the Open Pages documentation. Just to be clear, this first claim rule will get us the user principal name from Active Directory. Once we add that first rule, we need to add a second rule to transform that UPN to a shortened username format that will be used by Open Pages. You can customize these rules to fit your deployment. The second rule is also a custom claim rule. We'll call it UPN to name ID, as that describes what we're trying to do here. And again, we'll use the rule from the Open Pages documentation. This rule fetches the username before the at sign in the UPN. So, Open Pages Administrator at opnet.com, our domain, becomes Open Pages Administrator. Once we finish, with the second claim rule, we'll apply our changes and move on to exporting the metadata from the identity provider, ADFS. In order to export the metadata from the identity provider, we need to go to the following URL on the ADFS server. This will prompt us to download a metadata XML file. Earlier, we specified a file path and name in our WebSer Liberty XML config for the identity provider's metadata file. We can either change the XML config or the metadata file name to match the other. In this example, we'll set the metadata file name to match what we specified earlier in the config. Now we just need to place the IDP metadata file in the directory we specified earlier, like I've shown here. This file will be read by Web Server Liberty when configuring SAML. Now that we've set up the metadata for both the identity provider and the service provider, we can restart the open pages services using the following command, as seen on the screen. Once the Open Pages services have stopped, we can restart them with a similar command using the dash dash clean flag. This flag is essential after installing a new feature for WebSphere Liberty. Once the Open Pages services are back up, we can try logging into our Open Pages server with SAML SSO. If we go to the root open pages server, we'll get prompted to log into ADFS as you see here, and we'll then be forwarded on to the open pages application after authenticating. Once we're sure that SAML SSO is set up and working, we can go ahead and disable form based login. Form based login is what's used for open pages authentication when SSO is not enabled, so this is just to ensure all users must authenticate with SSO. We'll once again need to be a user with administrative privileges, and we'll change one last system configuration setting. We need to go to Platform, Security, Form-Based Login, Enabled, and change that setting to False, as you see here. With that setting disabled, our example setup is good to go with SAML v2, SSO, and ADFS. One last note, we recommend setting OpenPages user passwords to never expire when using SSO.
More information about making that change can be found linked in the OpenPages SAML documentation. If your SAML setup does not work as easily as this demo did, there are a few steps you can take to help with troubleshooting. So back in our OpenPages server directory within the WLP user directory, we can take a look at the logs directory. Within here, you'll see several console.log, as well as messages.log files, and some trace.logs. Messages.log can be extremely helpful for determining what went wrong with your SAML setup. There's also some Aurora tracing that can be turned on. If we go to the OpenPages Aurora comp directory, and we open up auroralogging.properties, we can enable additional login logging. Find the login logger section as shown here and uncomment these five lines. This will enable Aurora login tracing. You can also up the level of tracing by finding the login appender section and changing this debug setting to trace. This will log sensitive information such as usernames, so if you do not wish to log those settings, keep the setting at the debug level instead. These will appear in the Aurora logs directory and you can then use those to help troubleshoot your SAML setup. You can also see that on the OpenPages documentation, more information on setting the user passwords to never expire, and more information on enabling that trace logging that I just talked about for Aurora. In addition, sometimes users, when the SAML setup is not set up correctly, will see a 500 error both in the browser and in the messages.log file that I just mentioned. That error is typically not useful, and there will be a more useful error above it in the messages.log. But if you'd like to see a more useful error in the browser, we also provide some documentation on how to do that here with a custom error page. One last thing that may be useful is how to get trace files for WebSphere Liberty's SAML feature. As shown here, you can find the Troubleshoot SAML Web SSO WebSphere Liberty page by searching for it. And it has all of the settings necessary to enable WebSphere Liberty tracing for their SAML feature. Click on the Collect Data tab to see which trace settings are necessary to enable SAML tracing for WebSphere Liberty. This can be especially useful if you're having a problem that can't be determined from looking at the Aurora or messages.log files. And it will also be extremely helpful if you're trying to troubleshoot and open a support ticket. That concludes the OpenPages 8203 SAML SSO demo. Thanks for watching.